Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Santee, old buddy, old pal. Do one on vests in the Old West, will ya? Or in one of you, rapscallions. Yeah? Yeah? We can do that. Next to the hat, the article of clothing that stands out the most to me in Old West photos in Western cinema is the vest. In almost every Dressing the Part episode, a vest has been shown because they were a part of the Victorian wardrobe and extremely useful. I'll explain. The origin of the vest goes back to 1666. King Charles II of England was trying to outdo the fashionable King of France and introduced the garment. The term comes from the French word vesti. A vest, you American swine. Oh, leave the men alone, Louis. He's clearly of the lower class. Yeah, fellas, well, at least I'm not wearing tights. How dare well, you? I never. This is just stupid. The term waistcoat also originated in England and is designated as a more formal piece of clothing. You see, vests can also be sleeveless pullovers. However, we in America use the terms vest and waistcoat interchangeably. By the 19th century, we see vests becoming part of a matching suit of clothes. People also wore them without the suits, not only for a more formal look, but also because of the pockets. Yeah, vests could have up to four of these. Watches, cigarette makings, a tally book for counting cattle, even a small pistol could be carried in a vest. Extremely useful if you're in the saddle and you can't easily get to those pants pockets. Of course, there were still elaborate silk embroidered vests for those who really fancied a finer look. Gamblers, saloon owners, etc. They could be single-breasted or double-breasted and adorned with a common notch lapel, shawl collar, or no collar at all. Richard Bentoski, who has the channel Small Caliber Arms Review, is a big fan of Western cinema. He is a multi-talented fellow who not only shares firearm knowledge with his viewers, but also makes holsters and vests. When he told me he found the same material used for Russell Crowe's vest in the remake of 310 to Yuma, I almost passed out. I've been wanting that vest since the movie came out in 2007. Well, Richard said he had the extra material, and long story short... You are such a nerd. Thank you, Richard, for the amazing vest. I'll be honored to die in it for years to come. In the reproduction clothing arena, you've got vests made from Victorian era patterns. You can find them in canvas, silk, wool, cotton. It just depends on what you think your character would wear. Now, I've been asked many times about leather vests. Honestly, I haven't found a single photo of anyone wearing one in a settled town. Sure, a mountain man or a trapper could certainly have one to protect them from the elements. Don't and of course, Hollywood him, really please. likes them. Get him. But until more information is uncovered, I would say stick with the woven materials. Also, you must think logically. Would a cowboy on the range wear a silk brocade vest to a roundup? Would a banker have used for the rugged canvas one? I think you should have at least one or two vests in your wardrobe. More if you want to go around in style like Jedi Knight, who has more vests than I've got coffee mugs. Ooh, it is nice. I think that'll look good on me. Hey, uh... What are you doing? Nothing. Got my vest there, huh? Oh, your vest. Yeah, that's my vest. Oh, I just found it here. Um, where did you get a nice vest like this? Well, a subscriber named Richard made it for me. It's a copy oh, of the... Oh, I see. He <clears throat> made you a vest. Didn't make me a vest. Oh, well... You Dan... sure he didn't intend this for me? No, no. It's, it's definitely mine. Uh, however, you can borrow it whenever you want. You well, know. I'll just hang on to it, and if you need it, you just yell. No, no, that's that's my vest, so you can't. Give me the vest back. Come on. Hey, just a second here. Folks, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. No way.